I remember when I got an apartment off campus in college, and I thought it was smart at the time. And one night I was sleeping, I heard this little noise. I just did this little, this little scratching, and I, 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 what the hell is that? And it ended up being a mouse. But I couldn't help myself from calling it a rat. I was like, there is a rat in here. I can't sleep in here. No one, there's a rat walking around. I need, I need to sleep in the living room or something. But then even when I went to the living room, I was worried that the rat was going to follow me. It was not a good thing. Not a good thing, but at least it wasn't an infestation. And unfortunately, when I looked at this slate on Sunday, there was an infestation of rats, and I'm going to be betting against them, or I'm sorry, with them. We bet when you bet on the team that screws everyone, you're betting with the rat. We become the rat. It's the year of the rat, Chinese New Year. I don't know if it is, but every year, I just assume it's the year of the rat because they keep coming through in the NFL. And I think we're going to see that again here for week seven. But first, I want to let you know, if you haven't seen any of my hockey videos, they've been going very well. We hit over 80% of our bets this last week. But one bet that you can 100% hit, I think, is the promotion that BetMGM has going right now. Let me introduce you to my friend Wayne Gretzky here. He will tell you that if you bet $10 on any NHL money line, and either team scores a goal, you're gonna be credited with $200 from BetMGM in free bet credits. And I know if you've ever seen like a, a promotion where if either team scores a touchdown, you get credit. Well, there's a weird chance that doesn't happen. You know, that there's a weird chance you get a 9-6 game and no touchdowns were scored and you don't get it. In hockey, there are no ties. A goal has to be scored, even if it's via shootout. So it's 200 in free bets, guaranteed, but just make sure you read the fine print in the descriptions, what I like to call the micro machine details. When you download iTunes and it says, oh yeah, just, uh, just give us your firstborn and your secondborn and just agree to all that stuff, hit next, then you can use iTunes. Make sure you know the specifics because I'm sure there are geographical limitations and international restrictions and all that stuff that I clearly have way too much ADD to read. So looking at these week seven games, like I said, it's an infestation. When I opened up the lines on the sports book, and the first one, it just stared right at me. I, I, I got blown back by the level of rat that I saw in this one. You got a one-loss team going in to play what? Like a two-win team, and the two-win team is somehow favored by three. I don't even need to see team names. Just read that off to me. Give me that team. Give me the two-win team. That happens to be the Jacksonville Jaguars. The only thing I'm praying is that it somehow goes down to minus two and a half because then I will be jumping for joy. I just don't, I hate that even number three. I can deal with it. Three and a half, I'd be disgusted. Two and a half, I'd be in love. So just like in life, you have to kind of compromise. We got the Jacksonville Jaguars by three. And just know, just know, if you're going to bet the Giants, you are that person who the smart people in your town snicker at off to the side. You see the stake in the woods. You're a hungry person. You're in the woods, you see a steak sizzling, perfectly cooked, and you just walk over to it and eat it. And then you're dead an hour later because you've had more spears thrown at you than Ace Ventura did by the Wachutus. So I'm taking the Jacksonville Jaguars minus three. The other big rat, a Jack Nicholson gnawing, cheese eating rat, that would be the San Francisco 49ers. Everyone's on the Chiefs. This has nothing to do with Christian McCaffrey. For me, I believe that, you know, when, when a running back is active or inactive, even if he's dynamic, it doesn't really move the line. I think only quarterbacks actually move the line. But this is more so the situation. I love the Niners off an embarrassing loss. We saw how they were coming home after that loss against the Broncos. They came home and absolutely massacred the Rams. And I'm hoping for a similar performance. I really think we're going to get it. And I like the Niners in this one. I still believe, I've mentioned this a couple times, the Chiefs are a little bit overvalued. I don't think they're as good as they were last year. They should have lost that game against the Chargers. They had that awful game on the road against Indy. They trailed by multiple scores at home against the one-win Derek Carr team. And then they lost, a, they played well last week and just lost a tough one to the Bills. But they're certainly not the Chiefs of, you know, the 15 and one Chiefs of two seasons ago definitely not so i'm gonna take the niners at home and then in that game you guys have seen i'm pretty good with my shanahan assessments debo samuel they don't rack up touches on him 
in games against cupcake teams or that, but in the big games, the Rams games, games that are tough to win, they bump up his usage a lot. And when I looked at the props and saw his receiving total at 54, I have to take the over or it's somewhere in the mid 50s. That's just too low for a guy like Debo Samuel because when they play teams like the Chiefs, like the Rams, teams that are playoff level threats, they ramp up his usage. So I'm imagining a bunch of screens, a good amount of targets, usage out of the backfield, even though they have McCaffrey, I believe you're gonna see a good amount of Debo Samuel. He's been underwhelming, but I believe it was part of the plan. They know it's all part of the plan. They know he's crucial to a Super Bowl run. And his first couple of years before last year, he was injured and they know they have to maintain his health. But in games like this that are tough to win against Kansas City, I think you're gonna see a good amount of Debo in this one. Another game that I like, I actually bet a good couple weeks ago, I told you that anytime you get two division opponents, two teams that maybe have playoff aspirations, like you get a Ravens, Bengals, we took the Bengals in that plus three and a half. I said, anytime you get a plus three and a half, take the underdog because many times it's gonna come down to the end, it's a field goal and you know you're a winner. Well, what about when it's two and a half? I want the other side of that. I want the team that's favored by two and a half. I want the team that if it's tied at the end, uh, they can come down and a field goal can win it for them. So I took Tennessee a couple weeks back when they were plus three and a half at the Colts. Now I'm actually gonna take them again, minus two and a half hosting the Colts. If it was three and a half, I would actually go with the Colts. But at two and a half, I like Tennessee. They played well against them, went up big on them. And I know the Colts are on a mini win streak, but they're eking these out. The offensive line hasn't looked good. I know Taylor's returning in this one, but he hasn't been particularly effective so far this season. And I really like, I mean, every year I'm waiting for Vrabel's ship to sink. And, and this freaking guy, I mean, there's a certain point we have to give him credit because he's doing a good job. Every single year, he's had a winning record, and after a disastrous 0-2 start, he's really steered the ship straight coming off a bye. Uh, I feel pretty good about the Tennessee Titans. Now, I mentioned that Christian McCaffrey trade, which has sent him away from Carolina. They also shipped Robbie Anderson out of there last week. There's one guy left on that team who has the ability to make plays, and his name is DJ Moore. And I'm gonna take the over on his absurdly low receiving yards. I know you might be thinking, come on, with PJ Walker, look what he did last week. Well, yes, yes, you are correct. But then again, they were on the road against the Rams, and he had to deal with a good amount of Jalen Ramsey last week. Go look at last year. Go look at Walker's starts last year. He was willing to throw to Moore and absolutely did. And now he won't even have the luxury of checking down to McCaffrey because Tuba Hobard, whatever the hell his name is, and Deontay Foreman are certainly not Christian McCaffrey. And on top of that, Tampa's had one of the best run defenses for a couple of seasons now. And when you're talking about Carolina being double digit underdogs, that means they're gonna have to be throwing. So give me that over on DJ Moore receiving yards. And then lastly, the cupcake bet, there's no such thing, but look, they refuse to update it. They think they know him better than me. They don't. You guys all won a massive parlay a couple weeks back, that same game parlay that I gave to you because it was all built around Derek Carr, Johnny checkdowns to the running back. We built our whole thing around Josh Jacobs. He had five catches, we knew he was gonna have five catches. Why? Because he had five catches the week before that. And why? Because he had five catches the week before that. And they went back to two and a half. The over under on Josh Jacobs receptions are once again two and a half. I, look, I'm of the belief that eventually, like if they see a big amount of bets coming in on a random prop, that they're like, whoa, whoa, what is that? Why did everybody take that prop? And then they go retroactively investigate, like a murder investigation. And then they see what we did on the same game parlay and they're gonna figure it all out. And they're gonna say, never put Josh Jacobs at that ever again. But while they keep it low, we got a feast on this total. I'm happy, thrilled to take it. Give me the over two and a half receptions for Josh Jacobs. And those are the picks that I have for you here for week seven. Good luck to you guys, better luck to me. As always, do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe, the whole Dunkin' Donuts, bagels, muffins, what do you want over here? Um, I do appreciate the support. Like always, if you have any questions, reach out to me on social media. I'll do my best to get to them. And uh, I guess I will see you tomorrow night for Monday Night Football. Take it easy. Have a good one. I'll see you then.